If you like this content, please help it trend. Subscribe, leave a like, a comment. Check me out on all my other social media platforms. It helps me trend more than you'll ever know. It's TV Nation, DIY for fishing. Hey guys, we're gonna kick off with another video here for the lot. Just so you know, there will be a full playlist, which is more or less a series or a volume for this entire boat build. It's right up here in the art card. Please click on it above if you wanna see any of the other videos for this build to include everything. Everything will be in that one from start to finish. It'll be a pretty good video spread because we're only just beginning. Check this out. So this is a Frankenstein frame. We're really putting different generations of the system into one. So this is a Gen 5 system. This is specifically for the day boxes. This is the only Gen 5 in this. You're not missing much. I can't really release the specifics on Gen 5 because my patrons really help me like refine it so it's kind of theirs. And uh, I can't just like release it. Some of it's actually their idea. They helped me refine the system. But I was able to publish an even better system with a full video tutorial on it, and it is on Patreon if you wanna check it out. Here I'm trying to use parts of the boat that are pretty key, like ripping them out of the boat would cause pretty deep damage to the hull. So I kept them in here, I tried to use them. Would you believe that whoever lined up these side pods did not line them up straight when they built it, so that's why we have that little offset angle there. We need this part in before we can do the rest. Because how we're going to sit that Gen 5 like core, we're going to sit it right on top of angle like this. We're going to attach it with the joints. The cool thing about uh, Gen 5 is we got rid of most of the flat bar underlay, the 1 8 inch flat bar underlay that we had in Gen 3 and Gen 4. It, we got rid of pretty much all of it. Gen 3.2 Retro, the same framing that we used for the tracker, also more or less got rid of it. And that's actually a pretty good frame because I, I get a lot of people hitting me up and they just can't find 1 16th inch angle to save their life. They're they're really upset. They're like, where are you getting it? And for, I guess my, I must be blessed. The area I'm at right now just has it up to its neck in 1 16th. And so I'm just able to get it at will in, 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 in giant bulk. So I don't have the problem that most people have. But if the only place you can really find it is at Lowe's or Home Depot or some other hardware shop where they charge an arm and a leg for like eight foot cut pieces, then Gen 3.2 is a really good equivalent. It's, it's the wood aluminum hybrid version of Gen 5, and you use far less angled aluminum in that version than you would use in one of these little core frames. So Gen 5, just in case you're wondering, is a series of independent slats. There's no true core anymore. So what that does is give us freedom to frame anything out any way we want without having to rely on a core part where you can only run the hatches a certain way. Literally, you can stick them anywhere you want. In puzzle pieces until they line out. And so you don't like it if you can take off one spot, you can put it on another. And as long as you have spots like this, uh, one eighth inch piece of flat bar to join them, you can do it. This is a three inch by one eighth flat bar, aluminum flat bar sheet that we're gonna stick between each part of the angle to join the Gen 5 on there. And it's gonna sit on the rail. Then we're gonna install the other side of the rail. And then we'll show you how we do the foam walls. Pretty cool. This boat is gonna be stupid light. Like you're not gonna be able to tell there's a kit in it when you drive it. We're gonna, our, our goal is to make this thing plain in a 15 with two people with a full kit and gear and ice in a live wall. So wish us luck, because this boat's pretty serious. It looks like a 16 foot boat at sight. It's actually a 14 foot boat. It's just a big giant thick beast of a hull from Lund. Lund makes a pretty sick boat. But if you do like what you see and you wanna try Gen 5 out, make sure you get an electric or pneumatic riveter because it takes five million rivets and your hand will have arthritis by the end of the project if you don't get one. In this section we're going to end up using angle for everything. I'm trying to get rid of the tubing mainly because we're going to run in half inch angle spots here in half inch angle in uh, 10 inch to one foot you know increments is actually pretty strong especially if you're spanning them about a foot across. We're just using this uh, three-fourths to line up the bottom rail here. We have to run a bottom rail because when we put that pour from in there Parts of it laid out right, parts of it bloated. So if we don't run this, we're not gonna get a straight run. And plus we need something to attach the angle onto anyways. All these sections are gonna be put in here to run an inch and a half thick foam wall. And you'll see that here pretty soon. As soon as we get this all lined up, um, we more or less have the section for the rod locker and then we can really start doing cool things for the rod locker. Because this particular section of the framing doesn't have any drain tubes that go to the dry hatch directly to the subfloor, we're drilling small holes into the subfloor underneath the hatch system that we know the water will bleed out into. And there's an actual pretty big cutoff 
in front of the hatches were, the water will drain right directly into the middle channel. And now we work on the hinge, which is its own big monstrous things. I apologize for the giant mess in my garage, just so you know. No, I don't like it either, but with limited time that I have, I have to choose. Do I want to clean my garage, or do I want to crank out this boat? Right now we're making the rod locker and side stow hinges. What we're doing, we're taking an inch and a half by 1 16th angle, and we are riveting a two inch by one eighth piece of flat bar. So the one eighth inch piece of flat bar when it's held vertically is really, really hard to bend. So that hinge is gonna be able to free float out there with minimal support and stand alone and not flex when it's step on or sat on. And the last little half inch there, we are going to attach a piano hinge to. We are pre-drilling the holes to mount the piano hinge to. We're gonna end up mounting an inch and a half long aluminum piano hinge to this and a lot of people have hit me up um, saying they can't find those piano hinges they can only find the 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 odd ones over there at Lowe's or Home Depot and they don't actually have a metal shop or any sort of retailer next to them that holds them. Boat Outfitters actually holds these piano hinges and they're a really good price. They actually have really good prices on their entire site you should check them out. I'll put the link in them below to their stainless steel piano hinges which are a little heavier than these but are way more robust, way more durable. We are pre-drilling to offset a rivet every so many holes on the piano hinge. That way when it goes to close the other rivets that are gonna be joined into the other piece of angle that's gonna actually be the hinge for the hatch will they'll they won't bind up together. It cannot be rivet on top of rivet with those hinges. Before we can stick all that in, we need to get this wall situated because we're going to have to panel over it so it looks clean. So now we're putting in the, the foam sheet. So remember we talked about the foam wall, the ultimately light foam wall. This is uh, inch and a half thick Artec polystyrene sheeting. So the Gen 5 packet we stuck there, that gives you a slight 1 16th upright. But when we go to channel this foam in, the angle we put right on the top is going to level out completely with the with those hatches right there and it all like just flows together really seamlessly at this point so it's completely level at this point for the deck And because we're getting a little ahead here with the framing, we're going to have to run conduits. I really wanted to run two in that spot. It's not going to be possible. But we can run one big one. Over here, we're making the offsets for the foam again. Remember, we ripped out a bunch of foam right there in those sections. So we're going to add even bigger offsets to put even more foam in. That's where we... Well, this is the same 0 0.025 aluminum sheet metal that we're riveting to angle. And we're going to eventually be sealing in with quad foam and then pouring in just like this. But right here, this section's already sealed off. And we're ready to at least put the 
initial layer of pour foam. When we're doing this around the lockers, this is going to seal those rod tubes in place. They are never going to move again. We're pouring them in all the associated sections. This is right next to the main hatch. So all those tubes we ran into the subfloor in the last video are now doing their job. This foam is just going to fit right around those tubes and those tubes will drain any water right through the foam into the subfloor and then out to the bilge. Okay, so I filled in all those areas to the max right there, and then I cut it off. And then those tubes, I cut them so they sit lower than the foam, or they're supposed to sit lower than the foam. And hopefully with that, that one definitely will do really well. Hopefully with that, we won't have any residual water stacking up on the foam and it'll just drain down the tubes into the middle and then out to the bilge. That's if water gets swamped in here. I mean, overall, I think it's going to be really hard for there just to be a lot of water on the deck unless he gets caught in a brainstorm. The, the boat walls are just too high, and the boat's just simply too robust. I don't think it's going to be spearing waves. He either has to get caught in a massive storm, but we're preparing for everything. We're going to clean up some of this aluminum, grind a little bit of that stuff off that came over there. Then we're going to lay skins on it. Then we're going to panel that with carpet, and then we're going to do a foam panel carpeted and glued right here. And then the back will do an offset. So the rod locker, really the par compartments, they need to be start getting done now. Um, and I need to start running wires and getting all that done now. That way this doesn't become a problem for me later. So after we got all that stuff off with a grinder and a sanding wheel, we're now prepping the surface with acetone. We're gonna lay gator skins. Why I like this stuff is because it really is virtually indestructible. It's uh, recycled neoprene rubber with a bunch of UV inhibitors in it. It is super, super robust and durable. I prefer it over anything like, say, some C-Deck or any sort of foam like that because that stuff is not really high performance. It looks great, but uh, I don't know. I've used both. That stuff wears in a month. This stuff, if you left it out in the, in the weather, out in the salt water, exposed in the harbor, it wouldn't crack or lose any color. Just any discoloration for like close to six years. You can take a blowtorch to it. I put every last chemical and sulfur I could on it a few times when I, you know, my own floor was dirty. Nothing really seems to take it out. It has 3M backing, and so when it gets stuck to the aluminum, once it's there and it sits there and it cures, it's not coming off. You will take it will take you days to get it off and get all the residual stuff off. So it's not meant to ever come up once you put it on. How we're putting it on here is we left enough of a gap to overlay so it gets on to the side of the hull, not just the floor. And then right in those little sections, we're gonna be able to cut out the little sections there. So it essentially forces the water to go down the holes. It can't go and run off anywhere else on any of the side of the foam. It can't go slide down and start causing problems. It has to go in those holes or it goes nowhere at all. So it's one of the big advantages. And I would honestly run gator skins up that wall there, but I need it for some other stuff. And so we're gonna end up putting a foam carpeted wall there to cover all that up. And for those of you who kept asking me about compartment drains, I just wanted to show you, I have these on my store. They're in the live wall section and they're in the, the boat hat section, I believe. They're just, they're literally labeled compartment drains. And this, obviously this tote doesn't fit well because it's got all those molding presses, but if you got like a Rubbermaid brute box or any other like tote with a flat molded surface on the bottom, those things would be great. Absolute perfect drain for live walls or any sort of like cooler or compartment drain that you just need drains for. I really wanted everything under the deck to be as wood free as possible, mainly just for longevity reasons, because I don't ever want this boat to have to come back to me under like a warranty deal. And so this is 0 0.025 aluminum sheeting with bunk carpet. Now we did use bunk carpet only for the insides for the paneling. The only thing we use bunk carpet for. For the actual top deck, we will be using 20 ounce marine carpet. That's going to be a very, very cool video and a very cool series. This stuff looks awesome. This is actually coming out pretty good. The actual idea of this works. We will test it later. We will show you how it works, how it drains out. It's overall doing pretty well for the moment. We're going to have to fill in some little small gaps just for security reasons. We're going to use quad foam. This is close cell spray foam. Not ever used for flotation, but simply for filling gaps. We're getting in the crucial areas, and right here, I'm trying to spread it on the wall 
for it to act as a, an adhesive for the foam wall. This actually fails miserably later. Because I didn't cut the wall the exact size I thought it was going to be, it started jamming underneath the hinge. So that kind of stunk, but I got around it. Just quick to show you, I did start running wires as we talked about because it does need to happen now. You need to be making your conduits and everything before you get too far in with pouring the foam in. And so we're getting all the wires central to the hub, getting all that stuff in. The hub will be behind this compartment that you're seeing and running it through PVC conduit piping. And then we're going to be hiding other spots of it in walls. Stay tuned as we pick up right where we left off. Subscribe to my channel if you like what you see. Like and share this video if you want it to trend. And if you really want to support this channel and get perks in the midst, check me out on Patreon.